Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here coming to you from the storage facility. Uh, it is almost Christmas time now, so regardless of what you celebrate, happy holidays. Uh, I hope that you guys are staying safe during the pandemic and making the best of the holiday season, um, which I know is difficult considering all that we're going through. Um, today I'm at the trailer to finish off the winterization process. Um, we did a camping trip in December earlier uh, this month, which was very unusual for us, but we had some mild weekends and uh, I had the time, so we went out and did that. I think I've mentioned that on a previous video, but that's not why I'm here today. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very annoying uh, and somewhat costly maintenance issue that we had with the trailer. Probably one of the more significant problems we've had since we've owned it. Uh, so I'm going to hop outside now and tell you exactly what was going on and how we fixed it. So one of the things that a lot of people will tell you when you're hooking up your camper um, and getting ready to leave the campsite or when you're getting ready to head out is to test your lights. Check your brake lights, check your turn signals, check your marker lights. Make sure that everything is working and that you have a good connection. I will be honest, I got a little sloppy with that and a little lazy. The camper is a 2018, my truck down there is a 2019, and I will be honest, I wasn't always checking it. But back in, I would say, late summer, uh, my son was asking if he could help me with getting everything set up to leave the campsite, and I said, sure, let's test the lights. And it was every camper's worst nightmare, or one of their worst nightmares, when he hooked up the camper and started testing the turn signals. Everything on the left side was fine, but on the right side, absolutely nothing. No turn signal, no brakes, nothing. So when that happens, what's your first thought? Well, maybe it's just the bulb. So I uh, had to cut into the silicone here. The dealer put extra silicone around it to seal this unit. Um, and it's fairly stiff because it's never been taken off before. But I was able to pry off this housing and inspect the bulb that was in there. And sure enough, the bulb looked fine to me, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I popped off the other housing, took the bulb out of that side, which I knew was working because we had um, everything working on the left and threw it in here. And sure enough, it still didn't work. So that was very concerning. Um, I had no choice but to drive home probably breaking the law doing that and I wouldn't recommend it but we had to get home uh, we couldn't afford a tow so we had to drive very very carefully home um, and and get it fixed as soon as possible absolutely so um, after I got back home safely I started to do a little more research to look into what exactly the problem was and I thought well I've got to start looking at the camper itself but also the truck so the truck was the next thing that I wanted to look into. So on, upon doing a little bit of research on the Google, I discovered that a lot of these newer trucks have dedicated fuses specifically for different components um, of the whole towing assembly. So I opened up my handy, tan, uh, handy dandy fuse panel and examined, it's a little hard to see here, but there's a list here of all the different fuses and what they do. And eventually you're gonna see uh, in here fuses that say things like trailer tow uh, LT turn, so left turn slash stop. Uh, there's one for trailer turn, right turn, and stop. And the fuses correspond to uh, the different connections on your seven-way connector at the back. And uh, sure enough, the fuse for the right turn and right brake, which was the light we were having the issue with, it was blown. So I pulled the little uh, 20 amp fuse, put a new 20 amp fuse in it, and voila, the problem appeared to be fixed. Or so I thought, because after a couple of other camping trips, I sadly once again discovered that the light had burned out again and the fuse was blown again. So at that point, I took the truck to my uh, local Dodge Ram dealer and they did some diagnostics and informed me that in their expert opinion, it wasn't the truck. The truck wasn't the issue. Something was happening in the camper, which was causing the fuse to blow. Now, uh, as a little experiment, we hooked up my in-laws van to the trailer. I used to tow this trailer with a 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan. I hooked up a Grand Caravan similar year uh, and everything worked perfectly, which was very confusing. 
But then, again, experimenting, troubleshooting, um, I hooked up the truck, truck rather, to a few other uh, trailers that belonged to friends of mine. And in each case, the lights worked fine. The fuse didn't blow, which I was kind of left scratching my head. Why would the trailer work fine on the minivan, but not on the truck? And if it's not an issue, if it was an issue with the truck, why is it when I hook the truck up to other campers, the lights seem to work? So the mystery uh, sort of deepened. So the next step for me was to take my trailer to a uh, reputable dealer. Uh, the dealer where I purchased it from is about three hours away. So I found a dealer locally uh, that had done some service work for me, did a fantastic job on that. So I figured, why not take it to an expert? I suspected, and, and they weren't too sure about this as well, but they, we were wondering if the issue was in the actual seven-way plug itself. And I've got some, um, uh, some grease there to help with conductivity. My brain's not working today, so I can't remember the name of the grease, but I'll, I'll put that in the subtitles. But anyway, um, and I wondered, maybe there was a short somewhere in the plug. So the dealer had the trailer, the camper, for about a day and a half. They, um, th they did some testing with some of their diagnostic equipment, um, and they, they said, we can't really see what the issue is. Maybe it is in the truck. So on a whim, I asked them, I said, is there a chance that maybe there's a short in the seven-way plug? I was thinking that maybe uh, there was a small short, and when it was shorting out, it was blowing that fuse, because I figured the electronics in these newer trucks are probably pretty sensitive. So the RV dealership said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll throw um, a new seven-way connector on your camper, and we'll replace the cabling at the front. And they were very skeptical that this would resolve it. So I drove out to pick up the camper, hooked it up to the truck, plugged in the cord, and lo and behold, everything worked. The lights and everything uh, seemed to be fixed. So hallelujah, great, we can go camping, we can be safe, we're not breaking the law, uh, everything's good. So again, we went camping, we did a, a fall camping trip, and as we pulled up to the dump station, a very nice gentleman behind me said, hey buddy, just so you know, your lights on your camper are not working. Uh, and I thought, oh my goodness. So again, um, I finished dumping the trailer, I pulled off to the side, I opened up the panel, and yes, the fuse had blown again. So at this point, I was keeping like a, a whole pocket full of fuses inside the truck. I popped in a new fuse, tested the lights, it was fine. Got it back here, tested the lights, still fine. So we got back with functioning lights, but I realized, no, we still have an issue. So I'd already spent a few hundred bucks to have the RV dealer look at this, and they were left scratching their head, they couldn't figure it out. There was no charge to have the truck diagnosed because it's so new, it was under warranty. So now it was a case of, what the hell do I do next? So it was at this point that I remembered uh, a business uh, in St. Thomas, Ontario called Century Service. And this is not a paid promotion for them, but they have saved my ass before when it comes to 12 volt wiring. Uh, when I got this camper originally and uh, I was towing it with a Dodge Grand Caravan, the Grand Caravan didn't have a brake controller in it. And even the Dodge technicians themselves were scared of installing one because the wiring in the Grand Caravans is notoriously difficult to work with. Um, and nobody, none of the dealers of, of trailer dealers, no truck dealers, nobody would put it in for me except for Century Service in St. Thomas, Ontario. These guys are 12 volt wiring experts. They do all the wiring for a lot of the local police stations and their cop cars. Um, and they are electrical experts when it comes to 12 volt automotive wiring. So they were the ones that did the brake controller in the van for us. Um, and so I went back to them and I said, hey, look, I've got this issue with my camper. Do you think you guys would be able to take a look at it and, and see if you can fix it? And they said, yeah, absolutely, sure. So I took it to the folks at Century Service and guess what? within less than 24 hours and for a very small and reasonable sum, they had it fixed. So let's explain exactly what was wrong. So Century Service confirmed my suspicions that it very likely was not the truck that was the issue. They said that it could have been the plug, but the fact that we were still having the issue meant that there was something else going on. So they did their diagnostics, they did their testing, and what they discovered was actually pretty disgusting and goes to show that even a reputable manufacturer like Forest River can have some really funky things going on at the factory. Now, I can't show you exactly where the problem was, but I can tell you approximately where it was. 
they traced the wiring and the wiring had been pinched between the wood frame of the camper and the steel frame of the chassis under there. And what is really stupid about this is that the opening where the wire was, wires were supposed to go was sitting completely open with nothing going through it. So they either had an idiot working on the electrical stuff at the factory that day or an apprentice who really didn't know what the hell he was doing. So what had happened was over time, as the campers bouncing up and down the road, the wiring had worn where it was pinched between the wood frame and the chassis. And every now and then, depending on the temperature, depending on you know, the vibration, it was shorting out and that was what was blowing the fuse. So they rerouted the wiring, they fixed the wiring, rerouted it back through the opening in the chassis, put a grommet in there so that the chassis couldn't cut it, um, and, and fixed everything neat and tidy, and lo and behold, everything was fixed. They were horrified that on a trailer that was built, um, it's a 2018 unit built in uh, mid-2017, that something like that could happen at the factory. Um, and I am pretty surprised too. I've heard over the years that sometimes in the factories when these things are built, shoddy things happen. I'm not surprised. Um, if you are a subscriber to my channel, you will know that we did have an issue with the wiring for the furnace. Same kind of an idea, crappy wiring job and the wiring from the thermostat was shorting out. There's a whole other video on my channel that explains that, um, but yes. Uh, we have subsequently taken the camper out a couple of times and everything is working absolutely perfectly. And uh, let's wrap things up and summarize and put together how I think hopefully this video might help you if you're having the same problem. So what are we to learn from this, uh, this saga that took several months and cost me several hundred dollars and a lot of headaches and frustration to fix? Well, first of all, first lesson, always check your lights anytime you're hooking up and going anywhere. Doesn't matter if you're leaving to go camping or coming home, check your lights, make sure they work. Second lesson, keep spare bulbs, because if this had been an issue with bulbs, I didn't have any with me. Uh, it would have been a simple fix if I'd had bulbs, so that's the second part to this. The third thing I'm gonna say about this is that if you are dealing with a wiring problem in your camper, my advice would be to be very wary of going to an RV dealer. Now, I'm not here to slander RV dealers, uh, they're all different. They all have different levels of knowledge. But what I've discovered from this is dealers in my area have a lot of really great general RV knowledge. So they would be very good at, you know, helping fix your awning or uh, repairing your roof or doing something with the plumbing. Um, or in the case of my camper, you know, servicing your brakes, uh, checking your bearings, putting roof vent covers, you know, max air covers. But when it comes to something very specialized like 12 volt wiring, they really didn't know I wouldn't say they didn't know what they were doing, but they certainly didn't have the technical knowledge required to fix it. Whereas Century Service in St. Thomas, Ontario, they don't know, I'm assuming they don't know much about RVs in general. I wouldn't go to them to fix the toilet, but because it was a 12 volt wiring issue, which is finicky and they are experts, they knew exactly how to fix it and they fixed it right away. So going forward, if I have any wiring issues uh, on my camper, I'm not gonna waste my time going to the dealer with all due respect to them, I'm gonna to go to Century Service. So we'll wrap this video up. Uh, I hope that you are not running into problems like this, but uh, if you are, perhaps this video has been helpful. So thanks for watching, happy camping. We'll talk to you later.